What is up YouTube? I am back with another video on several medals that I have received in the mail today, but by the time you see this, it will have been yesterday for you guys, but you're you're seeing it today in your time. I'm, you know, but in reality for me, I received this package with these medals in it yesterday. By the time you see it. Sorry about that. A <laughs> little bit of confusion, but um no big deal. Now, I've already tried filming this once, and I ran out of storage, so I had to delete some of my older videos that I had posted on YouTube. So, unfortunately, if YouTube deems them, you know, too edgy, even though they're just metals, I mean, I don't see why they would deem it too edgy, um, I'll have to just refilm them because I had to delete them from my phone, because I'm just filming this with my personal phone. I don't have a dedicated phone for recording videos, though I probably should invest in one, which if I invested in one, I probably would just buy a new phone, move everything onto that new phone, and then just use the same phone I'm using now for recording videos. Now, anyway, getting off topic. Um, these medals did not come in this box. They actually came in that padded envelope inside of another padded envelope and on the outside of that padded envelope there's a little bag that had the invoice because these came directly from germany now there are several decent things about buying metals directly out of germany um well i mean technically this is a drawback normally it'll take about a month right now to get delivered now these only took a week and a half to get delivered i don't know what kind of you know crazy shipping uh, the guy who sent these to me used but it was supposed to be here late October, that's what I was telling people who watched my other videos, but they're here early. Now let's go ahead and get into these medals. Now the first one is just a wound badge, black brass wound badge, that was never actually worn in combat. As you can see, it is in tremendous condition, which I really like, because unlike my other one, um, this one doesn't have any wear and tear on it. Now, my other one, which you've seen if you watched my video from a month ago, has most of the paint on the helmet and swords and most of the paint on the wreath worn off and even some on the little pebbling. But this one does not. It has the same bent wire pin that wraps all the way around and back down and applies pressure. But now, again, I really don't think this one was ever on any German's tunic or anything. I think this was just specifically awarded, you know, right at the tail end of the war. Never saw any actual wear on a uniform, or it may have, and it may have been someone who, you know, just for whatever reason, never actually, you know, had any wear and tear on the actual metal itself, you know, officer, etc., now, with that metal out of the way, I want to move on to the main metal that I will be featuring in this video. I also have some ribbons that I purchased. But this is the first ever vaulted iron cross that I've ever purchased. Now, this one, the list price was like $110, or no, not $110, $210. I paid like $180 for it total with shipping and everything of course shipping was you know combined since i purchased all these at the same time now with this one unlike the a regular war issued or combat issued cross it is vaulted meaning this was probably a private purchase by a officer an aviator you know these tend to in america at least sell for like 295 dollars give or take a little bit because they're much less common than a flat iron cross which i will demonstrate i don't have a ko marked iron cross i have three iron crosses total now i have a 57 issue i have a world war one flat one that either was a actual combat issue or possibly a flat private purchase which i'll show you this is what a wartime world war one iron cross would look like that was actually issued during combat which is flat as you can see it is also sterling silver on the edges which also that one is but again 
this one's flat. That's pretty much, I mean, to be honest, the only difference in these two iron crosses that I just showed you. But onto this one, it's a little loose, this silver pin, but I mean, once it's on a tunic, I don't think that would be a problem because the way this pin mechanism works is if it was pinned to the tunic, the tunic itself would be applying pressure like this, so it wouldn't want to really come undone too easily, but I'll go ahead and undo the pin real quick and just show you. Comes undone like that. Very nice pin mechanism, very clean metal. There was only two little spots of rust on this iron cross. Again, this is actually the most rusty iron cross I've ever purchased. But um, when I got it, I of course did the magnet test. It does have a magnetic iron core, but I'm not going to do that test for you here because um, I put Shield T9 for the past day. I've been putting Shield T9, which you can see back in the corner. I'm not sponsored by them. I just read in a form of metal collecting that that is a very good oil to put on your iron crosses because it protects them. It neutralizes small amounts of rust without removing the rust, and it doesn't remove the black paint whatsoever, and it also cleans it and lubricates it. But anyway, I wanted to show you this, which I found kind of interesting on this iron cross. I don't know if you can... Hold on. Sorry about this, guys. I'm just trying to get it to the point where you can see it. All right, that's top there. Now, I don't know if you can see it, I'm a, a little shaky. There you go. You can barely see it. See where that rust is? You can actually see the edge of the iron core, which I have never seen on an iron cross before, where you could actually see the iron, the edge of the core right there. I don't know if I can point to it. You can kind of see it. It Again, it, it's much more noticeable in person, but the iron core is not quite as vaulted as the actual metal, so therefore you can actually see the core right in there, which actually you can see without it. If you look very closely, you can see it right there. I don't know if you can see that. Just something interesting I found, personally interesting, now, this iron cross was actually, I believe, worn in some kind of combat because there is a scratch right along there. Now, the scratch was either painted over after the war or wasn't really painted over, but it didn't actually scratch all the finish off because there's still black paint where the scratch is. But as you can see, there is a scratch going like that. I don't know how that got on there. It might have been even after the war that it got scratched like that, but um, I do believe this one was actually worn in combat because of that scratch, and there's also a couple spots of rust, which you can't really see, uh, there it is, right there, under the W. You can see it, that's a little speck of surface rust, but it's been neutralized by this Shield T9. Again, that is what I recommend to all of you watching at home. If um, you have an iron cross that has some surface rust or whatever, or doesn't have any rust whatsoever, like the 1957 World War One replacement that I have, which I've shown in other videos, I put bow shield on that too. It protects it, and as well as wound badges. Now, this one doesn't need it because it has all of its paint, and even if it didn't have all of its paint, it's brass, so therefore it doesn't need it because it's not going to rust. However, I do have a black wound badge in steel coming, which I will be applying the oil to eventually which i might make a video on how to actually apply the oil which i use a q-tip like this and i just go you know in there and get it nice and good and i do two or three decent coats but that's me i mean other people you know only do one coat i tend to do several coats allowing them to dry between each coat but that's just me. Now the final thing that I have to show you, which is just these ribbons. They are original World War I from a spool. 
that some guy had in Germany, the person I purchased this from. These will I will be putting on a tunic. But as you can see, these are this is a World War I second class ribbon combat or military combat awarded. Now, if it was one that was a non-combatant second class, it would the white stripes would be black and the, all of this that's black would be white. So it would pr pretty much be opposite, which there are some rare examples of Iron Crosses that still have their original ribbons with them that were non-combatant civilian issued or a non-combatant officers, or not officers, but you, you know what I mean. It was issued for something that they did that wasn't in the field of combat, which is quite rare. But um, anyway, that pretty much sums up this video. It's kind of being dragged on. I don't really have much more to say. But I'll get a good shot of them both in these little boxes that I have. These, again, were not what they came in. But I just put them in there just because it keeps them nice and safe. And keeps dust off of them but that's what I'm keeping them in for now again this stuff if you need to protect it says it's for bicycles but I don't use it for bicycles chains at all I use it only for metals and protecting them at least steel metals or iron ones that have iron cores like the iron crosses again there are some versions that have non-magnetic cores, but they're quite rare when you find them. Anyway, that will about do it for this video. Uh, I, um, videos that are coming up, I currently am on a winning bid. However, there's four days left in this bid, so I could be outbid. I'm not going over $40 on this. I'm bidding on a silver World War I wound badge, so who knows. Hopefully I win it, but if I don't, I'm not overpaying for it. It also is coming directly out of Germany, but it's not the same seller. It's some different seller. But, um, so, yeah, you will have that to look forward to. I still have yet to receive my black wound badge in steel. It's still on its way. It's still being, it's still on its way here, I should say. But anyway, once those arrive, I will then do a full, like, metal, like, all my metals together video like all of them on display and I'll just you know go through each one of them kind of quickly but I'll have to you know watch my time again because I'm kind of once I post this video I'll I'll delete it from my camera roll because I have quite a few photos so that's why I won't be able to you know make videos too long anymore unfortunately but that's just the way it is anyway hope you found this video interesting I'm kind of rambling on now anyway Again, hope you found it interesting. If you like the video, have any questions, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them, and I'll see you in the next video.